Hi, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri appellate attorney and a guy who likes to make the law make sense. So, if you are ever in the market for an attorney, hire him on the basis of competence, not on the basis of his political connections. I'll have more on that in just a moment. Most lawyers know that there is a way to get the full medical record into the evidence, into evidence in a case, and that the only real people who ought to talk about what's in the medical record are physicians and nurses and other healthcare professionals who put information in there. Uh, it is usually considered inappropriate to ask leading medical questions of people who do not have medical expertise. Now, cross-examination is one of the few areas where it's a make-or-break kind of thing in a criminal case. It is only the cross-examination that can help draw out favorable facts for a defendant in a murder case. But to be effective, cross-examination has to be surgical. Usually, when we are in the civil arena, when we do it in a medical malpractice case and we're trying to cross-examine a doctor, we will ask things like, you would agree with me that the patient had Wagner's granulomatosis? And they'll say, well, I don't know if I'd agree with it exactly like that. So then you break out their deposition. Sir, I'm handing you your deposition. I want you to turn to page 26, line 13. The question there says, what would you say his diagnosis was? And your answer was what? Uh, Wagner's granulomatosis. Okay, thank you, sir. And that is an effective cross-examination technique because now you've shown the jury that this guy wanted to run from his own diagnosis. But it's only effective to cross-examine a witness with medical records if they're the person that made the entries in the medical record. One of the things that I was just amazed by was the attempt to impeach the SLED agent, Mr. Kelly, on the basis of the medical records. Here, let's take a look. Let me see if you can identify this. These, to be, uh, these appear to be a portion of uh, uh, Mr. Murdoch's medical records. Well, let me ask you this question. Maybe this will make it easy. Who subpoenaed and got these records? Did you sweat? Uh, yes. At the time of the incident, we weren't, they weren't discussing his medical condition with us. I mean, we, had, uh, we were able to, uh, due to HEPA, they, they weren't readily providing us access to his medical records or consultation with his doctors. Um, you know, we... Uh, had uh, a general understanding based on what Mr. Murdoch told us or told deputies on the side of the road and based what he stated on 911 that he had been shot in the head. So when we arrived and we saw a subsequent injury. Okay. Just let me, add, let me cut to the chase here. Did you all subpoena the medical records? Yes, we did. Are these a portion of the medical records, the business records that you received from the hospital in Savannah, the Memorial Health? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, look at page one. What? that the medical staff says are his injuries. Yes. Okay, now, um, I could have you read that. Do you understand what it means? Uh, I have a general, like I said, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I'm a slate agent, so I have a general understanding of, of the terms on the, on the page. A, does it indicate he had a furrow wound in his head? I'm not trying to play coy. It just says, uh, I mean, I could read it um, if it says. Okay, let me, let me publish part to you and see what you think. Left posterior stereo per peritial subdural hum hematoma with, a, a, uh, with adjacent blood products. In case it isn't obvious, and clearly it isn't obvious because he's doing such a bad job of showing it, what he's trying to do here is show that Mr. Murdaugh was not competent to give an interview. But in so doing, he's asking this guy about information that is in the medical records that 
this agent did not put in the medical records and does not have the medical qualifications to testify to. And in the process, he is mispronouncing every single item. It's parietal, not parotial, and it is also hematoma, not hematona. It is amazing to me how bad this really was. Now, if you are going to do what he apparently wanted to do, which is show that there was a diagnosis of a gunshot wound and a head injury, the way to do it is to say, would you agree with me that the medical records show that there is a head wound? Yes. Would you agree that it shows that there's a skull fracture? Yes. That is an appropriate thing. Asking him if all these other questions and then getting upset when he tries to explain his answer is terribly off-putting to the jury and it makes him look weak and ineffective. Another thing that I think a good, good attorneys do with all of their witnesses is that they coach them before they go to trial to be careful about ask, answering the question. For example, in this clip here, we're going to talk about a cell phone. He went to detox in Atlanta. Uh, that's what y'all told us, yes. I'm sorry? That's what y'all, that's what you told me. Okay, and we called you from a facility um, in Atlanta to give the statement we saw earlier, correct? You called me from a telephone. I don't know exactly what your location. I, I wasn't there with you, so I don't know where you called me from. You're telling me SLED can't tell where a phone is? M Mr. Arpoli. I, I mean, if you're going to tell me that SLED can't tell us where a phone Mr. is. Pose the question. You must give him an opportunity to answer. I apologize. Uh, Mr. Harpooley, and you called me. I don't know if, what number you called me from. My cell phone. Okay, so you called me from your cell phone. Uh, I have that number, so it identified as yours right um but i don't know where you're at you told me that you were calling from atlanta i took you at your word but i can't testify to where you were calling me from because i don't know so what the council was trying to get him to do was admit that he knew that mr murdaugh was out of town but that really was not something that was an issue and it wasn't particularly relevant and I, I failed to see what value it did for the case up that, at that point. But the way to do it is to say, I called you on my cell phone. Do you recall that? Yes. And I told you Mr. So-and-so was out of town. Yes. What you don't do is say, well, I told you, that, you know, what you don't do is say, well, he was in Atlanta at, uh, at the hospital for detox. The agent rightly says, I don't know that. I know that's what you told me. Now, that doesn't mean that he's calling the, the lawyer a liar. It just means, hey, I don't have personal knowledge of that, and I'm not going to testify to something that I do not have personal knowledge of, which is an excellent thing for a witness to do, and what you should always do when you're asked a question. I always tell my witnesses, if the question is, how did you get to your deposition today? The answer is, I drove. If they want to know what route you took, what car you took, or what color your car is, those are separate questions. So this witness is doing exactly what he should do. He's answering only the question asked to the extent that he can answer it. Now let's look at a clip where we talk about the indictment. Okay, and as a result of his cooperation partially in what you already knew, um, you're aware that he was indicted on 90 indictments of financial fraud, which could result in life without parole for him. Do you not? Uh, he was found... Uh, if you'd answer yes or no and then explain your answer. I'm not certain what that segment of, co of cross-examination accomplished, other than the fact that it shows that your client was indicted for 90, com 90 financial crimes, which I don't think makes him look good in front of the jury. It's not like he's standing up saying, wow, what a clever criminal I am. Because all it does is make him look like a criminal and a jerk. Somebody who stole money from his clients and his law firm. Why in the world would you want to repeat the state's case? I don't understand that. Maybe he does. In addition, cutting the witness off and angrily demanding that he answer yes or no and then explain his answer, again, makes him look rude, arrogant, and not like he's in charge of this cross-examination. And then finally, 
we get to this point about how long Mr. Murdoch, poor Mr. Murdoch, has spent in jail. I would point out that Maggie and Paul have spent a long time in a cold grave. So I don't particularly feel badly that Alex Murdaugh has been sitting in a jail cell somewhere. I mean, did he make bond? I don't believe so, no. He okay, so yeah. he's been in jail since October 16th. Objection, Objection is sustained. Well, what opportunity has he had since October 16th, 2021, to manipulate witnesses, to manipulate evidence, to manipulate anything in this case? What opportunity? Go ahead. Uh, there's an objection. I'm sorry, what's, what's this objection? Objection 401, Your Honor. And response. Well, Your Honor, no question he's been in jail since October 6th. Your legal response to the objection. I don't the 401 is the objection, relevance, and your response. My response is that um, they have him, they're trying to portray, portray him as a manipulative Your Honor. person. And he's not got the ability to manipulate anything after October 16th. Objection is sustained. That's not relevant. Yes. Inappropriate argument uh, to the jury. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Yes. Now, at the end of this, what happens is the judge says, hey, you engaged in inappropriate argument in front of the jury. And he says, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Well, first of all, that should be the subject of a bench conference later on, probably in chambers, where the judge will say, don't do that again. If you have an objection, make the objection. And if it has something to do without that, something like that, that you think might be inappropriate for the jury to hear, come up and we'll clear the courtroom. That was a terrible thing for the lawyer to do. And it made him look bad because he got rebuked in front of the jury by the judge. And then finally, this last little segment about wanting to show Mr. Murdaugh a picture. Now, did you tell anyone in his family the reason you wanted to see him while he was in rehab was to show him a picture of a truck? The conversations about the picture of the truck. We obtained the picture of the truck on and around. Excuse me. If you would just answer yes or no, and then you can explain your answer. I'm, we're going to go down this trail, and if you say no, then I'm done. If you say yes, then I'm going to ask you when you did it. And we don't have to go through this back and forth for the next 10 minutes. Did you tell anybody in his family you wanted to see him in rehab uh, just to show him a picture, of, uh, among other things, to, just to show him a picture of a truck? I believe that was what, something, one of the items we wanted to discuss with Mr. Murdoch. Okay. And so you were giving the impression that at that point you still believed him and uh, you just wanted to show him a picture of a truck. Okay. Uh, or a long run. <clears throat> Relevance? Really? You're... Let me hear that question again. You indicated to a member of his family you knew was communicating with him that all you wanted to do was show him a picture of a truck. To the forum, Your Honor. It's cross examination. Thank you. Is that, did you, you communicate? What's the response? I asked the question. Could you repeat the question, please? I'm, I'm sorry. I just. Special, are you a senior special agent? Yes, sir, I am. Senior special agent Kelly, did you sh communicate to a member? of Mr. Murdaugh's family, Randy Murdaugh, that all you wanted to do was show him a picture of a truck. That was paramount in your, in, to, to you, and that's what you communicated to Mr. Murdaugh. Objection 401, Your Honor. <coughs> Objection is overruled. You, you, the question you just asked me is that, and I responded to, that was one of the things. That was not the only thing. You know, we, we knew the identity of, of Curtis Smith. We knew the truck that Mr. Smith. I didn't ask you what else you knew. I asked you. Ask the, the witness to be allowed to complete his answer here. Okay. You may continue your response. We wanted to meet with Mr. Murdoch to show him images of the truck. We wanted to show him to, to see. We, at this point, we suspected he was not telling the truth, and we wanted to see if he would continue to not tell to, to continue to lie to us about not knowing the existence of, of Curtis or the truck, or if he would, you know, show some type of clarity and. Now, the point of this is to say, well, they duped him into conducting an interview because they told him he just wanted, they just wanted to show him a picture. That isn't the case. And more importantly, he had counsel right there. 
Council knew this didn't have a darn thing to do with a picture. It had to do with mendacity, specifically Murdoch's failure to tell the truth about pretty much everything at that point. And so I think he terribly undercut his case by getting into that particular issue on recross. I think the prosecutor missed the boat by saying that's outside the scope of my direct, outside the scope of your cross. And as a result, it is irrelevant and should not be in front of the jury. But at trial, a lot of times you make strategic decisions not to object to things. Because, for one thing, you might want him to open the door, as happened in this case. You might want them to be seen as grasping for straws. And with respect to grasping at straws, let's look at some of the comments here. Feel free to pause the video here and look at these, especially the comments about uh, bullying and intimidating the witness. I think uh, all of these comments are absolutely spot on. Well, as you can see, YouTube University says the defense team is not doing a good job. You know, one of the things we do sometimes before a big trial is we conduct focus groups. We get people to sit down and look at our evidence and look at our case and tell us what they think is good and what is bad. Well, they have the opportunity here to use these comments in YouTube to figure out where they're winning and where they're losing. And unfortunately, I don't think they're paying attention because if they were, they might very well take a hard look in the mirror and decide to change strategies. Amber Heard's team did that at trial and so did Johnny Depp's. So that's what I have for you today. Uh, hopefully you found that useful and interesting. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Like, share, subscribe, you know all that stuff we ask you to do. I always try to wait till the end to ask you to do that because if you haven't liked this, you've already gone on. And I won't be bothering you by asking you to subscribe, but I would like it if you did. I do, would like it a lot if you subscribed. If you have already, I greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. Be kind to one another today. And as always, I'll catch you on here next time. If you like this video, here are a few others you might try, and don't forget to subscribe. Have a terrific day, guys.